Thank you. Dennis O'Rourke. Mr Speaker, my speech is going to be a little different than some others because I'm actually going to stick reasonably close to what's actually in the bill. Um, and New Zealand supports the purposes of the bill and will vote for it to go to the Select Committee for examination. The only criticism I actually have of the Government over this bill is why it took so long to bring it before the House, because some of the problems addressed by the bill have been around for quite some time. Those purposes are firstly to expand liability for careless damage to rental premises caused by a tenant or a tenant's uh, guest, and secondly, to define the rights and responsibilities of the parties where there is methamphetamine contamination in a rental premise. Thirdly, to define residential tenancies that are so substandard that they are to be made unlawful for residential use. Now, I'm glad that the bill addresses the problem of methamphetamine contamination because that's a problem, as I've just said, that's been around for some time, and I think it's actually the single worst problem in the residential tenancies market. And this bill will give landlords access to their properties to test for meth, and tenants would be able to terminate their tenancy if the test results show unsafe levels of meth. I'm glad also that the bill addresses the problem of liability for careless damage caused by tenants and by tenants' guests, because that also is a problem that's been around for some time. Tenants will be liable for the cost of their landlord's insurance excess up to a maximum of four rent, uh, weeks' rent for each incident of damage caused by the carelessness. I think that's a very fair and appropriate provision, and I'm glad to see it there. But most of all, I'm glad that the bill strength, strengthens, strengthens rather, the law for prosecuting landlords who tenant, who tenant unsuitable premises. Now, Mr Speaker, the housing crisis caused by the ineptitude of the national government has caused, as we all know, a distressingly large number of people who have been forced to live in cars, garages, industrial buildings, warehouses, under bridges, and so on and so on. And it's therefore been an opportunity for unscrupulous landlords to rent that kind of accommodation to people who can't afford better or who cannot find, cannot find suitable accommodation. And one of the effects of government mismanagement of housing has been to cause rents to rise hugely forcing people to continually look for cheaper and cheaper and worse and worse accommodation. Christchurch is an exception to that, simply because of the sheer magnitude of the insurance money that's gone into that city to provide more and better housing. And also the City Council's been pretty good about m making land available. But generally, the market's become a paradise for bad landlords and a disgraceful standard of rental accommodation at the bottom end. Now, moving on to the bill itself, it defines the term unlawful residential premises as those which are used for accommodation for a person but can't lawfully be occupied for residential purposes and where the landlord fails to comply with his or her obligations set out in the bill in relation to legal impediments to occupation at the start of a tenancy and ongoing compliance with building health and safety legislation. That's exactly as it should be. Properties that don't reach a reasonable standard should be declared uh, unlawful to rent to any person. And I'm pretty pleased also to see that if the Tenancy Tribunal finds that premises are or were at any material time unlawful residential premises, then there's some pretty good practical sanctions provided for in the bill. One of those is that the bill limits the liability of the tenant to pay rent arrears or damages or compensation to the landlord. So if uh, a tenant is living in very substandard accommodation, they simply can stop paying the rent knowing that it won't be enforceable by the Tenancy Tribunal. Now, that's a very good sanction 
on a landlord, a very practical and direct one, which I think will work very well. And uh, the tribunal can also make an order for the landlord to actually repay rent paid by the tenant. Uh, that's a step that I hadn't thought of, and I think that would be an even more powerful sanction on bad landlords. And the tribunal can make a work order to require the landlord to take the steps available to, to fix any legal impediment to occupation to comply and to comply with the applicable building health or safety legislation. Again, a very practical measure. So I thoroughly approve of all three of those me measures, and it's one of the main reasons why New Zealand First is pretty pleased with the bill. Now, of great importance, the landlord must not provide premises which are meth contaminated. And if the landlord knows that because of tests carried out in accordance with regulations uh, to be established, um, and the premises have not been properly decontaminated, and the, tenor, and the landlord never, nevertheless goes ahead and, and lets it, there will be uh, an amount payable for contravention of up to $4,000. So again, that's um, a pretty significant sanction. And it is deserved where a landlord knowingly lets a property that's, that's meth contaminated because of the danger presented to the tenants concerned. Now, um, the rights to end a tenancy of a contaminated property are also well defined in the bill. Uh, it, it allows the landlord the right to enter the premises for testing uh, and to take samples. And the notice for that is 48 hours, but not more than 14 days. And the time of the day is specified as well. And the tenant must be informed of those results within seven days, so they must share the information. And uh, the bill also provides similar sorts of uh, uh, provisions in the case of boarding house tenancies, and that's good to see as well. Now, if the tests show that any part of the premise, premises are methamphetamine contaminated, either party can then terminate the tenancy. Now, if it's the landlord, they need only give seven days' notice. If it's a tenant, then just two days' notice is required. Now, that's appropriate for premises that are as dangerous as they would be if they're contaminated with methamphetamine. And in addition to that, the rent abates, unless the tenant is, of course, responsible for the contamination in the first place. Now, as I've said, I think these are pretty good uh, practical uh, measures, which probably should have come in some time ago, but it's good to see them finally getting here before the House. And it's also good to see that there will be regulations brought down in due course to prescribe uh, a maximum level of methamphetamine uh, permissible for premises, uh, also to provide for the testing of premises for the presence of methamphetamine and to, pres and to prescribe the decontamination process. So unlike the Greens, I actually think this is a pretty good and pretty well-rounded bit of legislation, quite narrow in its scope. Uh, but, it, but, but it covers areas of problems which have been coming up for so long, and just about every MP in this House would have had people come to them describing these kinds of problems. So I just wish it had been done a lot sooner, but I'm very pleased to see that this bill is before the House now, and I look forward to looking at the bill in much greater detail in the select committee where we'll make sure that it actually does do the things that are claimed of it, which I've spoken about this evening. But for, for all those reasons, New Zealand First won't have any, any hesitation in voting for the bill to go to the select committee, and I do look forward to dealing with it there for the benefit of both tenants and landlords for the future. Mr Speaker. Joanne Hayes. Thank you, Mr.